Lungani, thank you for joining us for our special online briefing um, ahead of the G20 summit. My first question to you is, what is your sense of, of Russia using its presidency to promote um, discussions on labor issues ahead of the summit? We welcome the opportunity and the spaces uh, being created. Uh, of course, we do accept that there are limitations, there, there remain limitations about how effectively and in real uh, how to make a, a, an, an impact, a meaningful and effective impact. But we welcome the opportunity and it's a critical space that must not be allowed to close. It must be taken further for future purposes. So it remains very important for Labour to have space to make such impact. Now, globally, the labour market is under pressure um, and it's central to the bigger debate on global economic recovery, which is exactly what the G20 aims to address. Um, how did these issues come up at the Labour 20 Summit? Absolutely. The Labour uh, 20 Summit identify a set of critical issues, central to which were the question, questions of a, a jobs-led recovery. That means that uh, when we uh, every effort to rebuild the economy, every effort, effort to come out of the global economic crisis must have at the center job creation. We must uh, also critically is the question of not cutting back on uh, on, on public services and uh, and and the uh, important social services like education, health. It's continuing investment in infrastructure and uh, social development. Is the continuous uh, increase increased participation of women and youth, particularly in the labor market, uh, but also the adoption of macroeconomic policies that allow for effective development, not to restrict any further, uh, not to have macroeconomic policies that are conservative. So those are some of the issues that were put at the center by labor. And then last is the question of training. Uh, of young people to have the opportunities and skills uh, and, and, and exposure including apprenticeship and learnership into industry and exposure into participation in the labor market in general. There have been suggestions that the G20 agenda may be overshadowed by the G8 agenda. Um, is that a legitimate concern? It's inevitable that the, G8, the, 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 the core of the G20 is the G8 is the dominant country, so the, in fact G7.5, uh, so we can say. Uh, because they are the most richest countries in the world, most industrialized, and they have an infrastructure bigger than everybody else. Is. You, you mentioned the G7.5. Who is the half? Uh, Russia is in and out, is, uh, is, is not necessarily regarded even by themselves as fully part of them, but it's in a certain way part of them. So that is why we say seven and a half. Yeah. But primarily, uh, the critical issues is that they, they, they largely are able to coordinate themselves and set an, an, an agenda, as they do not only on the G20, but in other multilateral fora, uh, United Nations Security Council and so on and so forth. So the most important thing is that we must appreciate the fact that they have had a long history of cohesion and history of domination and it will not be easy to just overcome or merely to erode their influence within a while. So they remain very influential. Even in the trade union movement itself, uh, we still see the accession and the dominance of this uh, trade union from those countries. So the unequal power relations are a, a defining factor of the current global power relation. What happens after the Labour 20? Will these issues raised there actually feed into the bigger G20 agenda? Some will be, some will not, because uh, as we con it's a continuous uh, contestation. It's a badly of uh, influence. So we do believe that some of our issues will make it, and some have already made some inroads, but primarily the fundamental questions remain outside. They remain about the one, the transformation of multilateralism itself, and what is the role of the G20 in advancing a democratic multilateral system on a global scale. Secondly, is the role of uh, how to be able to create a developmental path that is environmentally friendly and that respects the integrity and role uh, or rights of uh, workers, women and youth. But also lastly, is to emphasize on the importance of macroeconomic policies that are responsive to the developmental needs of people, in particular uh, on the African continent, the questions of industrialization, development, and the involvement of Africa in full participation in global affairs. So those are the issues that remain critical and, and a lot of other uh, issues in that regard. Bongani, thank you for joining us.